Yo Sin and welcome back today you guys and today I'm gonna be starting a brand new series of like a how to play game series and it's gonna be playing all my favorite games that I play on my spare time where I'm gonna be giving you guys my five best tips and tricks to make sure that you guys can do good in those games as well and hopefully show you guys some games that maybe you've never even heard of before so let's hop right into it so this is after magic this is a game that my friend showed me and it's just a fun mobile game and it's a roguelike card game and I'm going to be getting into the five best tips and tricks for this game. But on the surface, this is just a card game with attack, defense, and you just want to survive and run through dungeons to collect your loot, money, and upgrades and get out alive. There's a lot of choices to make, a lot of cards in the game, and a lot of different strategies that you can make. But one of the biggest lessons that I learned right off the bat is that offense is your biggest defense. For example, if you have three enemies and they're all attacking you for 20 damage a piece, so you're going to take 60 damage, instead of trying to defend 60 damage and get 60 shields, maybe try to kill one or two of your opponents so you just have to only defend only 20 or 40 damage. I definitely have way more better odds of surviving when I just kill the opponent entirely instead of defending myself all the time. I mean, you, you don't have to defend defend yourself if there is no opponent you know what i'm saying so so as long as you can close the kill and you have enough cards in your hand to finish off the opponent i normally always take that route instead of the more defensive route unless i'm very low on hp or or i'm at in like a really tough predicament besides that you should always be taking the kill you don't you want to make sure you're not getting jumped you want to get rid of the opponents as fast as possible even if in the beginning of the fight you might take a little a little bit of a hit you just want to make sure that you're eliminating the opponents as fast as possible because the only thing worse than fighting three opponents is fighting three opponents for multiple turns my second biggest tip is going to be about maximizing your play style it kind of goes with the attacking over the defending but even so much so like there's so many different things that you can do that I'm even having so much fun with my decks right now. I keep building decks that keep drawing cards. And then what I do after that, after I establish the cards in my deck that let me keep drawing cards, I have a bunch of other cards that cost zero mana. So I just keep drawing cards and using cards, drawing cards and using cards until I literally just have no more cards left to draw. And then I finally end my turn. Or there's like people that I've been seeing play this game where they don't attack very often, but they just keep defending themselves and raising their fury. And when you raise your fury, it makes everything you do do more damage. So what they would do is just sit there and build up their fury. And then once they finally hit you with that final blow five turns in, they're going to be hitting you for so much damage that you can't block it. And it's way too much and it's going to be a one hit KO. And there's so many cool things that I haven't even gotten to see and uncover because I'm only I'm probably two three weeks into playing this game and i've done nothing but enjoy it this game it, it also it doesn't throw any ads in your face and if you want to like for example if you die and you want to revive for free at that point you can watch an ad but there's not ads being thrown in your face you're not going to get an ad every dungeon you play nothing like that the third thing is going to be spend wisely when you're in these dungeons you're going to be earning shards to, that you're going to be using to upgrade your cards you're also gonna be getting golds that you use to upgrade your cards. And so even if you have the gold to upgrade your ability or your armor or something, you still can't upgrade it unless you have enough shards to upgrade it. So I, what I'm learning now, two, three weeks into this game is that you get a ton of money, but what's stopping you is the shards. Now, the only way that I've found out to earn more shards or get exactly what I want is when you're running these dungeons, there's a little bag icon on the top right of the screen and you can click it and it tells you everything that you've earned, all the shards, all the money, everything that you've earned. So then if there's shards of a specific move that I want or, a, or for the town hall, for example, the town hall is the main thing that you're gonna have to upgrade so you can upgrade the rest of the town around it and it lets everything be more powerful. So I'm kind of at an odd point where I need more town hall shards but what I've been doing is at the end, like I said, I look through and if I have town hall shards in my bag at the end, they give you a little option. You can watch an ad if you want at the end of the dungeon, just so you can double your rewards. 
So I just take that ad if it if I do have the rewards I want in my bag. So it'll just double and get me to where I want to be. Because besides that, I've been having tons of gold, but still not enough shards to upgrade the cards you want. And you don't want to be in that predicament. Now, the next one is going to be all about rewards. The rewards is going to be tagging on to what I was just talking about in the last point. You're going to be getting a lot of different, like I said, shards, money and stuff like that. And you want to make sure that you are just getting the right rewards or you're not. For example, a lot of people just watch the ad at the end to double your rewards, no matter what it is. And a lot of the stuff, it's pointless. You don't you don't need it or you're not focused on it or you're not using those cards anyways. So it's really just about making sure that you know what your goal is and you're maximizing that goal specifically. Like I said, there's gonna be times where you are running four different dungeons just looking to upgrade your town hall or your cards and you're just getting every other shard but that. So you just wanna make sure that you're honed in and just, just paying attention, just simply just because you don't wanna get hard locked at this certain point, even though you are better, you can go further and they're just simply just hard locking you until you get those shards. Also, I will be talking more about the events later, but there's rewards for the events as well. And you want to make sure that you're checking those reward systems. They come with tons of gold, the actual currency that costs real money. You can get that for free. And then you also get a bunch of the silver that will make leveling up so easy, especially when you get later on and it costs like 20,000 silver just to upgrade one card. That stuff helps a lot. And like I said, this last one is all about the events. Now there's two different events that happen. Um, there's like the pit, I think it's called. And there's another one. There's one on the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen. And they're both actually pretty dang cool. Like the first one, I believe they give you a starting deck and you just, um, for example, they just show like 10 cards. And if you, any of those cards that you have unlocked, you could just start with those ones. And then it gives you this really hard scenario. And if you go far into it, then you get rewarded with tons of gold, silver, and if you beat the whole entire thing, you actually get rewarded a gold card that you get to keep permanently to use forever. And they're normally awesome, like better than average cards. So generally, if you there's a reward that rewards this awesome card, if for some reason you miss that event and I don't I don't know how the game works, but I don't if the guard's gone for good. You don't want to miss out on that, you know? So I at least make sure that I check them just to make sure that I'm not missing out on any really, really good cards. And then the other events, they're much softer. They're like everyday events where you just go into a dungeon and compete with other people and see how far you get, how many rooms you complete, or how, you know, some people might invest their whole day into it and go really far. You know, you can go really far or you could just run it real quick for five minutes and then your best result will get judged upon everybody else. And then you just get rewarded silver for it, which is just very convenient considering it's separate from the norm, like it costs energy to play. So you have a separate energy pool for the event. So that's really nice. And I highly suggest you guys go check out After Magic. It's a real cool game. This is not a paid ad. This is just the game that I've been playing on my spare time in my bedroom and it doesn't throw ads at me. And I figured I could tell you guys about it because it's pretty dang cool. If you guys like it at all, if you've ever heard of it, make sure you guys comment down below and tell them how cool it is and like and subscribe. Yosin out.